live from Liverpool. We need to talk about ghosts with Kevin Eustace. Yes, it is time for We Need to Talk About Ghosts with Kevin Eustace. I don't know why I repeat that each and every week, because I'm a bit of a tit, really. Oh, strong language right from the offset there. How are you all, wonderful people? I hope, you know what, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I've realised we've all got one thing in common. We all say, I hope you're well. And you know what? I like to think I'm the only one who sincerely means it. I'm joking. Of course they all mean it too. But it's interesting. I wonder how many people just say it as a blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? It reminds me when I was a boy, a young boy, a young Catholic boy, and the priest came into our school and he said, do you know, he was an Irish guy, I'll, I'll try and do the accent, he went, do you know that when you do, I can't do it, he said, do you know that when you say the Our Father or the Lord's Prayer, he said, if you just say it, like, blah, blah, blah. he didn't make that noise, but you know what I mean, he said, without thinking about what you're saying, he said, it's more or less an insult to the Lord himself. And it really freaked me out. And ever since then, when I, genuinely, if I say, if I happen to have a reason to say the Lord's Prayer, I'll say, like, our Father who art in heaven, and I'll picture this fella in heaven going, hi. And I'll be like, right, I am thinking about it because I'm putting visuals to it. Hallowed be thy name. And I'm like, there's your name up in lights. And I picture it up in lights. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's me shrugging at God because I have no idea what it means. On earth as it is in heaven. And then me pointing at the earth and then at heaven. Give us this day, he hands me a calendar, our daily bread, it's a loaf, and forgive us our trespasses, it's me breaking into somewhere, as we forgive those who trespass against us, it's me being broken into and saying to the guy, I forgive you. I could go on with that, but you kind of see how it goes. It really stuck with me, and it's kind of taken the religion out of it. It's important, that whole message of, you need to mean what you say. Don't just pay anyone lip service. So take the religion completely out of it because it's not everyone's cup of tea. But I think it's an important lesson we can all learn. Anyway, what the hell is this? Is it Kevin's Sermon from the Mount? No, it's not. It's Kevin telling we, telling we, telling we all that we need to talk about ghosts. Yes, we do. So, last week I went and filmed a little talking headpiece to camera for the Shudder series, Cursed Films. Yes, I did. And I spoke about Rosemary's Baby. I've spoke about this on the Patreon through the week, so they've already heard this part. So, Patreons, feel free to skip 30 seconds. But, in a nutshell, the UN's uh, It's kind of funny, really, the UN's. Hi, Kev. Can you look at two people in particular? The actress Victoria Vetri and also... Um, what was her name? <laughs> proves how well I done. Um, Christoph Kamida, who was the, mo- the soundtrack guy. I was like, sure thing, directors and producers. I will. I will do that, and they will blow your minds. They're very nice, everyone, to do with the production. Um, so I turn up fully prepped for this. I know everything about Victoria Vetri. I know everything about Christoph Kamida. I'm ready to go. And we sit down. It's He goes, okay. And they're talking via Zoom, although I'm with the camera people in the room. And the director goes, okay, so, Kev, can you tell us what you think the through line is between the Vietnam War, the end of the flower power movement, and Roman Polanski in general. So I say, uh, well, if it's anything like the actress Victoria Vetri, who starred in such things as, and just went on about the things I'd already know. Yeah, it got a bit weird, but um, I think I've done all right. They reckon I've done, done all right, and uh, we'll see. Anyway, it should come out at the start of next year, so we'll find out. How exciting, eh? Yes. Speaking of Patreon, our wonderful Patreons literally keep this show afloat. And you get two extra episodes each and every week. One is me on a Wednesday having a general ramble. And the other is on a Sunday, which is today, where you get a paranormal extra episode. And the paranormal episode we're talking about today is none other than the devil himself. Yes, indeed he do. We talk about him in the facets of religion. We talk about him in the facets of his existence. And indeed, we have a little chat with Becca about free will and whether she believes it even exists. It all gets a little bit tetchy um, and still hopefully a bit funny. Anywho, so if you want to become a Patreon, go over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Now, as I say, not only do you support the show, but you get loads of extra content. Now, we didn't give a shout out to our Patreons last week, so I have a bit of a list of people that I need to sing a thank you to. So let's try and do that now. So we have nine wonderful new Patreons. How am I going to fit nine people into a song, you may ask? Well, I do not know, but we'll find out. We have the wonderful Patrick Marshall, Lisa Spain, Aoife Murray, 
Ginger Chastain Connorman, Travis Lester, Jude Jetson, Danny Kratophil, Maria Rutledge, and Monica McAvoy. Wow, wow, wee wow. Let's try and fit these babies into a song. The guitar is indeed out. Let's try and do this. Two, three. Eva Marie, Lisa de Spain, Travis Lester, too. Maria Rutledge, Patrick Marshall, Ginger Chastain, Connorman, too. Danny Cradlefill, to Jetson, Monica McAvoy. You are all new Patreons, and I thank you for keeping the lights on. Yeah. Oh, struggled, but did end it on a seventh. Thank you to all of our new Patreons. And don't forget, guys, if you want to become a Patreon, head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Now, let's get to some spook, shall we? So today's episode is an interview with the wonderful new Patreon, actually, Travis Lester. Now... Not all of our stories and interviews that we do are going to feature tremendous devils and demons popping out of cupboards. But what we do have in Travis is someone who is living currently in potentially a haunted antique store. And as you know, me and Becca are both ardent antiquers and we like to go to antique places and say, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. And Travis owns an antique store. So... You know, nothing is too outwardly jumpy. You're probably not going to be scared out your wits during this conversation, but you are going to have a sense of the paranormal going throughout and some very good detailed conversations about what makes a scary scenario. Travis was a joy to speak to, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Here is Travis. Okay, so it's my favourite time of when we do the shows. We're doing interviews again. Hooray. And with me, all the way from Maine in the US of A, is the wonderful Travis. Hello, Travis. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm not doing too bad, mate. How are you doing? Not too bad. I've been looking forward to this all day. Amazing. Now, Travis sent me uh, an email story at first, and then you quickly got back in touch and said, it's up to you. You can read that email out or you, we can come on Zoom to discuss. So we opted to go for the Zoom option. So I've not read your email yet. So this can all be fresh and new. Great. Fantastic. Uh, you sound amazing, by the way, which uh, just to, if anyone's wondering why you sound so pro like you're in the room, it's because you've got the proper setup. Do you do a podcast or anything yourself? No, I just got tired of getting crap from my friends on Discord about how bad my mic sounded. Wow, fair play. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Um, and we're just saying, obviously, the, a lot of the state is in the midst of a heat wave right now. And you say you're, Maine's on the East Coast, you've just informed me of. And uh, you're suffering with the heat right now where you are? Yeah, it's been about 90 and humid the past three days. So Jesus. officially a heat wave in meteorological terms. I mean, it must prove how how much of an absolute weakling I am when it comes to the heat because we're having what I'll call a heat wave right now and that means it's about 73 and um I've still got the trust fan me on, I'm on suffering night. I'm suffering yeah, yeah I bet you are yeah yeah it's horrible I froze the glass that my drink is in in the freezer before I started the call that's how much I'm suffering that's a very good call actually um okay so let's talk about the paranormal for that's why we're here so then, Travis, tell us what was the content of your email and what sorts of ghostly things do you want to talk about today? Well, uh, well, my name's Travis, obviously. I'm 24 years old, and my parents and I currently run one of the biggest antique shops in the state. Amazing. I love antiques. Genuinely, like, it's, I'm not just saying that because you're on and you're saying that. Genuinely love going antiquing. To, give it, well, to make it a verb. Look on I, uh, I, uh, no, it's... it's definitely a verb and uh well if you uh if you want a good place i know a place <laughs> <laughs> um this place is about thirteen thousand square feet spread across three floors wow so it, it's rather rather large yeah so you take a building of this size 
built in the late 50s so not that old comparatively speaking but old enough and you pack it full of old stuff if you tend to believe in like spiritual attachments at all you're just Mm. asking for creepy stuff to happen and surprisingly it hasn't happened as much as you might think and Mm. i don't know if it's because i haven't been looking or if i've just been like putting the blinders on so i don't scare the pants off myself or what but (laughs) i have experienced and caught a few things so in terms of like because i you know what every time that we go to a similar place um and i love them i do love proper like old antiques the ones in in england i'm not too sure whether your shop's similar but the ones in england and round there's some in liverpool and they will cram everything into this really old like a really old four level building you know there's like lots of little cabinets and some will just have medals in some will have coins in some will have knives in um and i i've not yet for me which is surprising gone up to a member of the staff in there and said what's your most haunted item or what's your most cursed item or anything like that. So right. what, when you say you haven't caught many things, what have you caught? Well, um, after I agreed to come on, I, uh, my, my brain started turning and I was like, well, I better make sure I have enough spook. So I went through, <laughs> I went through my security cameras. I have security cameras that are hooked up to the cloud that I can look at, look at on my phone yeah. and they record there's 10 of them so far and they record both video and audio and mm. you can look at a specific camera and pick out different clips and they'll be like the the, the app will label them uh sound eight forty two thirty three p.m or mm. that kind of thing so just in the past week i think i picked up uh probably five or six just weird unexplained bumps bangs that kind of thing if i ever saw a full-bodied apparition i'd probably i'd probably scream for the hills but uh, yeah luckily i haven't got that far yet so the sounds and the bangs and bumps these are not just your average um house settling down sort of noises no no uh those tend to be at least in my experience kind of like a more uh snappy and uh the noises that i picked up are like dull thuds like you you drop something on the floor or Mm. something like that so how about like um have you how long have you had the place oh has your family had the place you to say well it's been under my parents and i's ownership since uh january 2019 but Mm. i've been involved in some shape or form with it almost since it opened, which uh, it opened as an antique store in 2002. Hmm. So I would have been six. Okay. So and my I know dad I'm... was in the business before that. Oh, so he's done. Uh, he... So antiques has basically been in the family prior. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he had a, a main job, you know, he did construction work, carpenter work. He was self-employed and yeah. he ended up at an antiques auction looking for a bed for me. And mm. that was all it took. He hooked that's, that's all it took. Yeah. And that's, it's been kind of his hobby for a while. Uh, he, uh, the place was going to close in 2015, 2014, 2015. The, uh, yeah. the previous owner had been, uh, had been passed away for a couple of years by that point. And uh, him and a business partner went in together to save it. And we saved it, kept it going. Uh, my first job was there, uh, 17, which is right before yeah. my dad became an owner. Uh, business partner didn't work out. So now, since 2019, it's been my parents and I. Oh, very good. Yeah, nice family business. So yeah. I know on, on your email, um, there was a story, if I remember rightly, uh, from May 2020, something to do with, was it a Vietnam vet or a, another dealer or something similar? Yeah, yeah. The the Vietnam vet part is it was just a a trait of one of the people who was there because I tend to I have a habit of oversharing or rambling. But uh, yeah, basically what happened is uh, we had closed for COVID, and yeah. right before we reopened on June first, we thought you know hey let's give the dealers a chance 
because we rent out space to individual dealers. Let's mm. give the dealers a chance to come in and kind of tidy their floor spaces or their cases up, make sure they have what they want in there, that it's all dusted and tidy and organized. They wouldn't want to organize it. So when we reopen, it looks yeah. nice and fresh and everyone can feel good about how it looks. And uh, two of the dealers that I was closer to, a lot closer to, they're practically my surrogate grandparents at this point. Oh. And uh, I was there helping them with their booth, you know, taking stuff in, moving stuff out, that kind of thing. Yeah. And all of a sudden I look up and this dealer has a lot of light fixtures, you know, chandeliers, that kind of thing. And, yeah. you know, the fancier chandeliers, you know, they'll be like lead crystal or glass and they'll have the little, the dangly bits on the bottom, the prisms. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked and one of the chandeliers, it just had one prism that was swinging back and forth at a pretty good clip. Mm. And everything else was completely still. You know, if there was the uh, other prisms that were like right next to it or other prisms and other chandeliers swaying yeah. back and forth said, oh, yeah, then that would have been the wind. But uh, because we had the door open, taking stuff in and out, but. It was just the one prism. So I look at that. Yeah, so it's said, not going to be one specific, very thin breeze, is it? Right. Yeah. Mother Nature hasn't pursed her lips and gone. <laughs> to the, exactly. Yeah. Good <laughs> to the one chandelier arm. <laughs> so I saw that and I was like, okay, yep. Uh, okay. And I, I just kind of filed it in the back of my head. I didn't really want to uh, address it. I just kind of got back to what I was doing. Because mm. even though I have an interest in the paranormal, I have this... I have kind of, I don't want to say a phobia, but kind of a, like a fear of stuff happening to me. Like yeah, when I, I think, think that's about quite it. healthy though. Yeah. So I go back to what I was doing. A few minutes later, I hear another, I hear this noise, like something fell over, something light fell over. And I look and a basket, an old basket that the dealers had hanging from a hook from the ceiling, which is probably about mm. eight or nine feet off the ground, was on the floor near me and either um i can't remember if it was the husband or the wife ron or millie one of them said that basket's just flung itself off the hook and i was like fantastic <laughs> and this is the same area this is like this yeah the, yeah the, in the, the store yeah yeah like Amazing. within feet so wow yeah, that was that really that creeped me out quite a bit. And that was both of the, that was all on the same day. Oh yeah, within probably I want to say thirty minutes of an hour or an hour to each other at tops. And what did the, what did um, the two owners of that particular section say? Did they reference it? I mean, you know, I know you said that one of them said that's just done that. Did they follow up with that? I thought they just crack on with the day. Nobody really addressed it. I think we. I don't know if they just kind of thought they had better things to do or if they're, they're very devoutly Catholic and I don't yeah. know where they stand on the paranormal stuff. So they did, I think they just kind of made note of it and went on about their yeah. day. And I went just on about one of my those day, things, just kind of shooting. Say. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, shooting a side eye to the, to the <laughs> basket every time I walked by it. And um, on your email as well, Alex, uh, Alex, on your email again, sorry, Travis, it says there was... Um, Something about a software update in 2019? Oh, God, yeah. It was, uh, there was actually, it wasn't necessarily an update. It was like a huge, it was a huge mess up. It was a software issue. Okay. But the, uh, the consequences of it were dire because of yeah. our lackadaisical update schedule. Right. So to make a long story short, I basically had to manually re-enter two weeks worth of sales. Like if you think Aww. of a normal sales day, nine to five, every yeah. sale you do in that day, I had to do 14 days of that by myself in the basement on the bottom floor of the store. And it could not be done during business hours because I had to change the system time and system date in the computer to get the point of sale software to record it correctly. I mean, so, automatically uh, there, before you even say the spooky stuff that's happened, let's just picture that you're in the basement of a three story or four story antique store on your own when no one else is there 
at night. I mean, that's enough anyway. And yeah, and night, you know, I wouldn't do that now. I'm 42. I, there's no way on earth. If you said go down there to pick a kettle up or something, I'd say no. I'd say or I'd say come with me. Yeah, yeah. Oh no chance. So except in this case. Uh yeah. so since it couldn't be done during business hours and after a few days of me just kind of poking at it, my mom said, look, I actually kind of have a deadline in order to, because she does the bookkeeping, I actually kind of have a deadline so I can have this information that I need to send to the accountant for something. Mm. I was like, oh crap. So there was a good stretch where I was there probably until midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., it was very creepy. Some of it might have been psyching myself out. Some of it might not have been. The atmosphere definitely made for it. Um, <laughs> whenever it's dark in there, I purposely make like the back and forth trips to like to and from light switches to make sure that like my path is always lit. Like yeah. if I'm headed out or in, I'll like zigzag back and forth from light switch to light switch to make sure that no matter where I'm standing, it's always lit very wise and uh, yeah <laughs> so yeah. anyways i was down there alone by myself uh, early on in the whole debacle just kind of poking away and i hear a bump coming from somewhere in the expanse above me because i'm on the bottom floor in an office and i was like well that was that was weird i don't quite know what that was I just kind of noted it and got back to what I was doing. Hmm. And a few minutes later, I heard it again. Bump. It sounded like something had, this is going to sound oddly specific, but it sounded like something had fallen off of a piece of furniture onto the floor, yeah. even though I never found anything that fell. And that kind of thing went on for most of the time that I was re-entering that that data is like not quite often enough to scare the pants off of me or to like go to ghost hunters and be like yeah. investigate my store yeah. but it was just enough to remind you that something was there and it kind of added the base level of tension when you were down there doing whatever you needed to do i bet you did yeah so I mean, and that would have been from the technically the ground floor then, or the the, the entry floor if you were coming in from the street. Well, uh, the the ground floor is actually the middle floor. There's the basement downstairs, and then there's an upstairs. Right. So, you're, so the the floor you're talking about the noise coming from is technically a floor lower than street level. Well, that was just the thing. The bumps never came from the same place and I could never discern were they on this floor? Like, were they coming from somewhere like laterally, like next to me on the level I was at? Yeah. Or sometimes it would be that. Sometimes it would be above me. Sometimes it would be above me and quieter. The volume was never constant. The location was never constant. It was just, just enough to kind of keep you on your toes. And there was no real rhyme or reason to it. That's amazing. And it, you know what? It's it's brilliant for someone like me to hear a story like this, because as I say, I, I will seek out antique places and they all see in the UK anyway, they all seem to be built in a similar fashion or should I say the buildings that are used for antiques are all of a similar ilk. They're all four or five stories high. They're very narrow. They're very windy. They're a health and safety nightmare. And yeah, like some of the, some of the, there's one in, um, in Birkenhead which is just over the river Mersey. And as if you, if you enter this room, it must, it's that old and the floorboards are that knackered on it. That if you stand on one side of the room, a cabinet on the other side will move because the floorboards are that <laughs> warped and goosed. And there's, you're like, there's antiques in that cupboard. Why are you so laissez faire about, we could just bounce everywhere and smash everything. <laughs> right. The floors in our place are quite creaky. Yeah. Too. I, I often joke with customers I mean, not just walking by. It's like, oh man, never going to sneak around in this place because the <laughs> floors are so creaky and they're so, they've been so heavily trodden to the buildings, just like what it's been used for over its overall life, which was a retail setting of some kind or another, mm. that there's literally the floorboards were are actually quite thick and there's been like, you can see the worn paths. Yeah. 
in the floor from where people have walked over the years and practically every board has a creek yeah so i was going to ask about the history of the building but you've touched on it there you say it was previously a retail space of some sort yeah i uh i knew a little bit about it and i dug in just a little bit more and what i was able to find was that it was built in the late 50s it used to be main general store um at one point it was expanded on a bit it wasn't always the size that it was Mm. um i don't know when the expansion happened though and at it's let's see it'd been mainly pine first and then main general store at some point but i don't know don't know when the change happened yeah and it uh took over it was started as an antique shop avalon antiques in uh, june 2002 Okay. And the building was, it was built in the fifties, you say? So it's. Yeah. Late fifties is about the best I could come up with. So it's around 70 odd years now. You know what? It's an interesting thing. This about, I was talking on the Patreon podcast today about time and about like how, how your perception changes about time and the, 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 the distance of time. What I basically mean is when I first started getting into ghosts, I was about maybe nine years old, 10 years old. So I'm 42 now. So that would have been in 1989 slash 1990. And then at that, right. at, at that point, because now when you say built in 1950, my initial reaction is to think, well, that's not that old. But when I was 19, in 1990, when I was 10 or 11, if somebody would have said this building 70 years old, that means that building was built in 1920 um, at that right. point. And that would make me go, God, that's old. You know what I mean? And right. at the same time, I know exactly happens. what you mean. So it really it blows my mind when I think about how your perception changes to time. So it is an, still an old building. You know, it could have had a number of generations of people living there or working there. Yeah, and I, I, I've heard like general, you know, I've heard some stories and anecdotes, and I think the same family more or less has been involved in it for, for most of its life. Hmm. But I don't know, like, the definite history. Like, I can't go and pull out, like, a news clipping and say, you know, yeah. here's the date when it this happened. You so know? how about, we touched on it earlier, but how about the likes of cursed objects or haunted objects? Is there anything in the store that's either ever come in or you might be in possession of now where you've just thought, I don't like that, or maybe your parents have said, that can't stay for long or something similar? <laughs> We'll get some, we'll get some weird stuff come in. Uh, Usually the things that'll be the most off-putting or give you the weirdest vibe Mm. will be like old uh, face masks. Oh God. Like used in theater or something or that kind of thing. Anything that kind of has a resemblance to a human face or uh, artwork in any shape or form that has humans on it. In fact, the most again this is a little bit tame but the the creepiest object that i remember and i still remember it Hmm. very clearly it was i think it was an old framed pencil drawing of a boy Hmm. and i can't really describe how it made me feel the best but i'm gonna give it a shot it's like it gave off this energy from its eyes right like have like when you looked at it you could you could almost see it but not like visually but it was almost like your intuition would be picking up on the energy coming off of it from its face as you looked at it wow. and the energy that came off it was just pure dark like ang- not like rage but that kind of subtle deep seated hatred yeah and uh, i Whenever looking around, whenever it would catch my catch my glance, I would oof, a shiver. It's an, you know it's an interesting thing there, and this is going to be one of those sorts of talks. I think, judging by what we're speaking about so far, where we kind of just go off on tangents, and that's fine. You know, that's people tuning in for all sorts. But on the keeping with the paranormal theme, it's interesting what you're saying there about like um, the eyes of a drawing, and I've mentioned this way back at the start of this podcast. Becca's stepfather um, collects art. You know, he, he's really he's a, 
he's a good artist himself and he's also into collecting like signatures and things like that. He's just a bit of a collector of, of curios items and he's also an avid bird person at uh, bird person rick and morty no he's like um uh, an avid bird watcher you know he, he can right. literally communicate i've been in the back garden with him and he said listen now you can hear that that means that they're under under attack that means it's gone away he's like really on to holy it. moly yeah he's like like dr doolittle when it comes to birds but there's this drawing which he has got um because he collects these sorts of things and it's a drawing of a bird from a very famous bird illustrator from way back in like um, the 1800s, I think. And this right. pati- this particular drawing of a bird, he said to me when we I first met him, he said, "What?" He knew I was into ghosts and stuff. He says, "What do you make of that?" And I was like, "It's weird, like it is. It's just a, a normal drawing of a color drawing of a bird." But anyway, there's a whole and it's documented. Like there's loads of sites which mention this drawing that he's got, um, and it's to do with uh, the guy who drew this drawing has gone on record to say that when he was doing the iris of this bird, he had a vision that his son had came into a room where he was drawing and told him that he was dead. Um, Oh God. Yeah. And then he finished the drawing and somebody came into his room and said, your son's just been in a massive accident and, and a died. Yeah. And this, this bird, this picture of the bird apparently is it's held high in high esteem and sorry, in term in like occult folklore. And he's got it. And I was like, this is insane. I was like, listen, That's wild. I was like, if I marry Becca and something happens to you, God forbid, there's only one thing that I want. And it will be that occultish <laughs> painting that you have there. But yeah, it's there, interesting. there's gotta be, there's gotta, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's interesting what you say about the, this painting, or oh, sorry, this drawer and having power in the eyes. Yeah. It makes you wonder if there's something to, you know, if something is in the process of being created yeah, while it's in that process, if it picks up uh, energy somehow from its I can environment. Defi- I could or... definitely believe so. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons why when I go to antique places, which is why I'm really glad that you've said about, you know, y- y- your uh, occupation is, is in antiques, because I've always wanted to say, like I've said to people, um, you know, do you ever get freaked out by the items that you get in? Is there anything that you'd you've not allowed to to buy? You know, if somebody says, "Do you want to buy this off me?" You've said, "No, we're not taking anything that dark in," because, like for example, you're talking about paintings and drawings being spooky. There's a a, a curio shop in Liverpool on Renshaw Street, and they do a lot of antique secondhand stuff. And one of the things they do, which I think I couldn't buy one of those ever, they sell like old Victorian razors. You know, um, like the double, not like a cutthroat one, you're like a double headed one that like, yeah, like my granddad had one put it that way and he, he, right. he died 89. Yep. Um, so like really old razors, but these are razors that men have used and took to the face time and time again. And they're selling them and it, I couldn't have them in the house because I just think that has got to have something attached to it. It's just got to. Right. We actually have, uh, we have a dealer who deals in a lot of, uh, older military stuff like pre like the 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 latest stuff that i've ever seen him deal in was like world war one area era like it's that era and before and the way the law in the states work is uh that you're allowed to buy and sell firearms without a federal firearms license if the firearm is deemed an antique aka pre a certain age so he'll bring guns in that are pre-1899 but a perfectly and, viable weapons though uh they they could be some of them more wall hangers some of them could fire some of them you might be fine some of them i don't know yeah but they'll be weapons of war yeah it's a very good point yeah. firearms that have been used more than likely to defend life and perhaps even take it wow you know what the, i've seen some of them in the ones in the uk must be a similar sort of law but i've never thought of that when because I'm, I'm you know i don't own a gun and we don't we don't sell them in the uk really but i'm a bit of a gun freak in terms of i love looking at them i like you know but i've even, as stupid as it sounds i've never looked at these old guns and thought they've been used to kill people but you're quite yep. right they have they, they really yep. must have some sort of attachment so in terms of you your family then if we just look to around your periphery then what's your general family's belief system like um 
you know, are, are they believers in the paranormal? Uh, my, my mom, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, my dad, not so much. And I can't tell if it's because he doesn't believe in it or if he doesn't want to believe in it. I see. But yeah, like if they, if they go to a creepy movie, it's because my dad's taking my mom for her enjoyment, for example, (laughs) or if there's a ghost show on TV, it's because my mom put it on. My dad's either asleep or watching it going, Hey, (laughs) <laughs> that's a lot of crap yeah <laughs> fair enough and how about you know where you are in maine is there any famous ghosts around where you are or where you live um i did some looking into that uh and there's actually not that much i would say in terms of like national fame international fame there's a few local areas but there's there's uh let's see the most famous one is probably there was a singer songwriter named Dick Curlis. Have you ever heard of him? I've not. You haven't? Okay. I mean, they That's don't have fine. to be famous I, I ghost either. stories. I mean, Terry Pine. You know, if you've got <laughs> one that right. no one's heard of, as he, long as Terry he Pine. wrote, he he wrote, he was a semi-famous uh, singer songwriter, and he wrote a song called "A Tombstone Every Mile," mm. and it was about a stretch of road. Uh, up in northern Maine that was supposed to be particularly treacherous and uh, the truck drivers they were transporting potatoes from northern Maine where there's a lot of potato farming or at least there was down to Boston and Mm. the title a tombstone every mile is referring to the high number of supposed uh, wrecks and crashes wow that drivers on that road would experience and uh, they they say if you go to that stretch of road now you there's a you know like a woman in white yeah kind of trope it is it is a trope but you know i i keep having arguments with myself about tropes because who was i talking to about tropes the other day uh i I can't remember but they they were kind of like they were trying to tell me the story this ghost story but they were kind of reticent because it was a trope and right i was like still tell me it just because it's a trope does not mean it's not an authentic case you know or a a real haunting you could almost make the argument that it's more authentic because it has more very more people exactly yeah exactly like a scientific experiment if it can be replicated it's it's more genuine so so I'm, i'm all for tropes but it's interesting if it's a like a woman in white who's i take it sadly died in a car crash or being hit by a car or similar yeah it was like a specific one it's like you know uh like the like the they uh her and her husband were on their way to or from the wedding and they got in a car accident and supposedly the the apparition that you see is the wife who's asking for help right and her husband is her husband at the time would have been you know in the car injured or unconscious yeah it is interesting that that I mean, I've seen on only on like YouTube and stuff, but I've seen some of the roads in America and we have them in the UK and there's some in Ireland, definitely, you know, where you could be driving for 100, 200 miles and not see another soul. Um, mm-hmm. And I've only been on one of those roads once and it was in Wales and we got lost, me and my mates. Um, and that was horrible in itself. You know, when you look, I, it's the only time when I've been able to look behind me in a car and see no one but stretches a road. And look in front of me in the yep. car and see no one but stretches a road. And Main's it, good for that. It freaked me out. It really did. I was like, I'm not all right with this. <laughs> I, I must need people around me, like the opposite of an agrophobic or whatever. But um, but you get nice, big, long stretches of barren, terrifying roads in Maine. Right. Oh, yeah. There's actually a section in northern Maine called the 100, I think it's called the 100 Mile Wilderness or something <laughs> along those lines. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, the mountain mountainous terrain, which it gets more mountainous as you go up north, is great for secluded, windy roads. Wow! See, I just think serial killer, or at least Bigfoot, or oh my god, UFOs. I think about that all the time. Yeah, you know, I'll be driving through an area because I don't mind driving, and I like seeing, you know, I like seeing what's in different places. And uh, I had friends that lived, you know, kind of all over the state because I made a lot of friends be a mutual friends and online. So I had yeah. friends that were like two and a half hours away. And on my way to them, I would be driving and just be looking around and going, 
this would be a really good spot for somebody to dump a body. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, maybe I won't stop here for a I don't a like win. thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> terrifying, mate. Absolutely terrifying. So just out of interest. I'm... Sorry, go on. No, one thing I, I actually wanted to uh, I wanted to pick your brain about. Yeah, oh, cool. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I have this kind of it's a it's a fear of paranormal stuff happening to me, mm. but it seems a little bit more extreme or high tier than other people's seem to seem to have of it and that could have just be that could just be my perception or or what have you but yeah i guess the question that i wanted to put to you would be uh how how would one get uh kind of more used to the idea i don't want to say less scared because i think you're right uh, good good uh good fear is healthy yeah in that case but if i wanted to be you know I want to be more open to the kind of thing because recently, since I started listening to your podcast and working in an antique shop, I've wanted to kind of open myself up to that kind of thing more and see if there's more going on around me than just what I've picked up and what I've shared with you here. Yeah. You know, if there's more going around, going on that I don't know about that I can know about, I want to be able to pick up on that and one of the things I've heard you say multiple times, I think it was your mother who said, uh, if you want to see a ghost, you will. And if yeah. you don't want to see a ghost, you never will. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your take on getting kind of more comfortable or open about the idea? Oh, Christ. Um, it's a good question. And I would say, honestly, is not, I was going to say to take it all with a pinch of salt. And I don't mean that because that implies have a back have a back, have a get out plan that it's all fake. And I don't mean that. Right. Um, you know, I would, I would say have a, treat it all with a healthy dose of skepticism and always, you know, the healthiest thing to do is, it, it, I would say anyway, is anything and everything that you experience, think w- what could the rational, the rational thing that this could be? What could that right. be? Um, and also what's the likelihood of that? Because just because there might be a rational explanation does not mean that's what it is. So, for right. example, you know, you've got to take it all into context. So if you're sat in your in your uh, antique store and you see a book move away from the shelf, go into midair and land on the floor, you know, the rational part of your brain will say, maybe you missed seeing it. Maybe it was a gust of wind. Maybe something, da-da-da, maybe blah, 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 maybe blah, blah, blah. But you do need to right. take into account what you've just actually seen. Um, right. And if I hope you, it was on camera. Exactly, yeah. But also, <laughs> well, I was going to get to that as well. But also, you know, if you think, if you find yourself saying, you know what, I'm trying to find rational reasons for what that was, then you've probably experienced something paranormal. And then just be excited by it. And I'm saying right. this as complete and utter bollocks advice because as I experienced when I was, when me and Becca seeing the tap turn on in this kitchen, I was, right. I was doing one of these calls last week and the telly behind me turned on. I'm hoping it won't now because uh, that'd be, yeah. I'd definitely have to get off. But I, like a telly turning on, I can kind of deal with, I know, yeah. I can kind of deal with a telly turning on because I could go, that's electrics, that's fine. When we seen the tap turn on and we both seen it physically moving down and caught it turning on like that, like a lever Oof. being pulled down. I was took back. Oof. I had to rationalize it by saying that was pressure and the taps building up. There's not, it's never happened before or since, so it's definitely not that. But I was made up thinking, yes, she's finally seen proof. I've definitely seen that happen. We've both seen it. That's amazing. But then that excitement turned into absolute paranoia and fear very quickly because I started thinking, right. like, if it's done that, that means there's something that I have no control over in this flat that has the ability to move things around without my permission. And and therefore it can be anywhere. Oh, and, yeah. it, and when the thought of that literally sent me a bit scatty for a few days. So you do need to keep a, a kind of. I've just got a shiver thinking about it actually because you do need to to keep Same. a healthy balance and keep sane whilst you're doing it. You know what I would do if I was you, genuinely. Um, yeah. There's an, there's an app on that I've downloaded. Uh, I'm not too sure how much it is. I think it was a couple of dollars your side anyway. Um, and it's called. Duh, 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 let me find it now. 
it might be on me. Oh no, it's on me paranormal phone. I've got another iPhone, which is me paranormal phone. Um, nice. Yeah, but I think it's called like remote capture or something or motion capture. It's a motion capture thing anyway. And you basically charge your phone up and you you point it at an area and it just it stays on. It will only record when something moves within it. If I was you, especially, yeah. you know, when you were doing the things downstairs in the basement, I would yeah. have put that on the floor upstairs each time you were in the basement and not looked at it for the duration of that week until you were somewhere safe, maybe a week later in the middle of the daylight where you're drinking right. a coffee and you can just go through the And recordings. not have to go back down there that night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, w- I would I would say to do something like that, it's because um, you'll only get strange, weird I think you'll anyone who genuinely takes the time to look, and if and this is, goes out to everyone who's listening to this, if you've got the time to download a motion sort of camera app or a sound recording app that only records when you hear a sound, if you leave it in your house overnight whilst you sleep for a week, something is going to freak you out. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's paranormal, but you've got the perfect space there to... If you're saying you want to right. see, you want to experience a bit more and you, you don't want to be as scared as... Not as scared, but, you know, as long as you're keeping mentally healthy when you're doing it, you're going to be that's, fine. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily want to have my first thought be to scream for the hills. Like my inner monologue can still be screaming its head off, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's a good shout. Yeah. I mean, to be, I think that's why I'm so open with everyone that I meet. Like literally a, the first three sentences when I meet someone new is, do you believe in ghosts? And it's because the amount of people that have had to talk me down from situations and say, no, no, it's not a poltergeist. That's just the wind. And it has been the wind. Right. And I've been like, no, right. it's the devil. He's going to eat me alive. <laughs> and then, priests. Exactly. And whereas <laughs> if they didn't know that about me, I'd be keeping that to myself and thinking, God, there's a devil in here and no one knows but me. Whereas, um, right, right. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, it does and it doesn't. Seriously, and also the 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 biggest message you can say is take everything I say with a massive spade full of salt because I am not one for giving advice. Well, I eat at McDonald's a lot, so I can tolerate some salt. <laughs> Fair enough. So, America. so um, <laughs> when's your next shift in, in what I'm now going to refer to as the haunted antique store? <laughs> uh let's see it is actually friday my schedule just changed which allowed me to be open on today to chat with you well, thank you very uh much. friday saturday sunday monday is my scheduled time behind the counter doing like sales clerk things okay. as an owner i don't just sit on my butt and tell somebody else to go do stuff you know i put i put time in you put the hours in good owner stuff that i do yeah. yeah. Well, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is my time behind the counter, nine to five. Okay. Well, you've got, you will, you'll have CCTV cameras in there anyway, I imagine, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's easier to look through it uh, for night stuff, but uh, it's whether you want stuff, to. Well, yeah. And that's it. And day stuff is a lot harder because you could see, you know, being looking through clips and you'll see person 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 sound motion person sound and it's, it'll all just be people chopping yeah but you know here's an interesting one just can't i'm not saying that you have done this but let's say for example if you if you went to that cloud now um could you put in last night for example and just would it would it tell you like three o'clock person uh yeah actually so if i open this and let me actually go to the loading door camera because I think that was the most recent bump and bang in the night that I found. So there's there's two views. One is just kind of just kind of a timeline view where you yeah. can just kind of scroll through with your finger and it will just kind of move through the footage chronologically. And mm-hmm. the other view is the isolated clips of motion or sound that is picked up and yeah it literally i mean viewers can't see it but i'll point it at the camera for yeah. you so you can kind of sort of tell i see what you mean yeah so yeah. it's like what you'd expect from like a corner of the room cctv sorts of camera isn't it really right yeah and it, it uh the cameras are good they pick up its sound the video is good we've already had to use them catching somebody who was doing something less than uh, upstanding and uh, so they they've uh, they work well, amazing. But I would do. I mean, so f- 
I'm just kind of jealous that you've got the access to this, to be honest, because I would literally be like, right, just give me, pull me a report that shows me all nightly activity from midnight till six o'clock for the last two weeks. And anything where it said, <laughs> like, person, I'd be like, fucking hell, set fire to the <laughs> Right, yeah. It, that, was, that was me a few days ago. I mean, I have to manually scroll through stuff, but I would see stuff and I would have to, it would say person, and I would have to look at it and be like, okay, is it actually a person or is it just this best estimate, this app's best estimation of a person? Yeah. And it adds another layer when it's at like four in the morning and nobody's there. And it's like, Amazing. person, and you're like, fantastic. Hopefully Does it do it's that? Just light. Yeah, it won't. I could set it to send me notifications, but I don't. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it, don't it does you. do that occasionally. And uh, luckily, it only does it in the areas where I can say, okay, there's a window, there's a car going by, headlights. Yes, I that, see. Yeah. There, that's motion. I can, I can, I can cope with that. But bumps and bangs in the night, I'm like, eh. amazing. And there's been a couple other things that have happened actually just recently. Um, mm. Kind of tame stuff. One was a bottle of a uh, bottle of Advil we keep under the counter because retail is a headache <laughs> pushed, it, pushed itself <laughs> off the shelf and landed on the floor and it was actually recently after I had uh, talked to you on Instagram mm. and I just kind of looked down and I looked up and I said I don't really need that right now but thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh but you one of them will talk them to them like no, not, not well, right now, yeah thank because you. Right, because I've been in the headspace lately where I wanted to be more open to it. And the other thing is that my dad's a gadget guy in mm. one of the light sockets downstairs in the basement by the office. He has a light where it, uh, it screws into a normal light socket, like a light bulb. Mm. But where the bulb would be, it actually has these three different panels that have LED lights on them that you can kind of point. And yeah. it has a motion sensor. And right. you can set it to either always on or motion. That bugger is always on. Is always. it really? Always, all the time. I have probably just in my past four weeks of memory, I have never seen it off when I go by it. And I have taken it down yeah. and looked at it and made sure the switch said motion. Wow. And gone, yikes, and screwed it back up. <laughs> That's amazing. See, I love all that. I mean, you know, it's an interesting thing, though, and you'll have to keep us in the loop as well, please, Travis. But I honestly think that, you know, harken back to that, if you want to see a ghost, you see a ghost. I think if you're genuinely saying that you're opening yourself up, it's that whole, as a skeptic who believes would turn around and say, um, you know, well, if you go looking for these things, they're going to come looking for you. And there's an element of truth to that, I do think. So I would say keep your head on the swivel for the next few months but well, do... if i go looking for if i go looking for wildlife or not the wildlife is still there Ex wow i'm getting a t-shirt made with that on uh, and then in brackets <laughs> yeah, one underneath... of the reasons i actually i'm sorry go ahead i was all right so you, uh, you, it was just a really poor joke carry on nah we love the jokes <laughs> uh one of the reasons i actually wanted to come on is i kind of since i was uh kind of reframing my thinking around this whole thing was uh you know, in case stuff went a certain way and I experienced more things, I figured, it could, you know, if there's anything more creepy that went on, I could just shoot you an email and be like, hey, guess what happened in the haunted antique store? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. You mean, know, that's... the fact that it was kind of an ongoing thing, more or less, and not something that happened 10 years ago is what pushed me over the edge to actually reach out in the first place. Amazing. And yeah, by all means. And this is kind of why I'm suggesting these apps and stuff like that. But as I say, you got CCTV. That's kind of Appreciate it. stuff. But um. But yeah, by all means, I'm always up for a live ongoing case. I think we had one a couple of years ago and it kind of petered out. But um, yeah. as and when stuff happens to you, Travis, you'll have to let us know. Right then, mate, I'm going to have to first. let you go. But um, thank yeah, you. Time is time. Time is time. <laughs> but thank you very much for uh, <laughs> for offering to come on. It's been a pleasure talking to you, mate. Really, yeah, I've had a lovely chat. And um, next time you'll experience anything strange, be it in your apartment, be it in your antique the haunted antique store um or yeah. anything else mate you need to let us know absolutely okay absolutely. it's been a pleasure being on here it's been great talking to you you're very welcome mate anytime um on the proviso of course that you're getting haunted by the devil himself but uh <laughs> thank you so much for that mate and um this will be out on sunday so you can hear this then fantastic
All right. Thank you very much, Travis. I'll speak to you soon, mate. Thank you. Stay well. You too. Bye-bye now.